Hi, Kevin, and welcome to Canadian Jeweler. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be here. Wonderful. So this is a big milestone for you and the company. This is a 50-year anniversary. Um, companies started off with your parents and their experience started in Belgium. Can you talk a little bit about the history of the, of the company and what you kind of were stepping into? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, yeah, as you know, I'm, both my parents are from Belgium. Uh, they, they immigrated to Canada and uh, my father and I guess mother as well is looking to start a business. They they did have their hands in a few uh, potential options. And um, uh, lo and behold, there was uh, some trust with a diamond cutter over in Belgium that was uh, looking to move some of his polished diamonds. And uh, there was a trusted person like my father and, and uh, in Canada that uh, could possibly uh, uh, work with. So uh, it kind of started literally from zero. Uh, my father and mother had really no uh, foot in the, the diamond business or, or history there. So father went around to some independent, you know, retailers and uh, was selling him some loose diamonds. And, you know, you make uh, a few dollars and you buy some more diamonds and you keep turning the wheel a bit. And, uh, you know, he was an entrepreneur at heart and a businessman at heart and um, a banking background and and him and my mom were a great uh, a great team and and yeah when you come to a new country uh, you know you want to uh, you know be successful and and uh, try to grow something to uh, help support the next generation and, and other businesses right so um, so it slowly be began from there and and literally to this day we're still dealing with and working with independent professional retailers and on the same capacity as partnering with each other and helping each other in our businesses and grow. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's how a lot of a lot of the businesses kind of start if they're lucky to survive as long as your company has. For sure. And you originally were um pursuing a degree in biology and you worked in in another field as well after you graduated and it looked like you were kind of were thinking of going in another direction can you talk a little bit about that experience and then how you found your way now back into the company and you've been with the company for many many years definitely um well I mean my parents were always about you know getting a good education uh no matter what you know when you have a good education no one can ever take that away from you so um, I think that was always important to them and and myself and my sister we we both went on to university my sister went on to have her PhD in, in oncology um, and I also just had a passion for science and uh, I did take some geology uh, in in my undergrad years as well and uh, just enjoyed that pursuit and, and I think again having that uh, you know no one can ever take that away from you um, and I think Part of you know running a business or you know doing something my father did and my parents did was is just having a passion and really enjoying and loving what you do. So I don't think they were ones to say you need to come into the business, uh, you need to follow us. I think they were really much about do what you go love to do. And actually, um, I had to you know kind of convince and, and over a couple of years that I was going to eventually possibly. Uh, you know, be with them in the business and, and take over and such. Um, but yeah, luckily enough, you know, I also enjoyed biology. I went on to the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, it was really interesting and, and uh, learning a lot of uh, skills there, uh, which was un unbelievable uh, what I learned in those five, six years and being a part of that world. Uh, but of course, that's the big corporate world. And as much as it was, um, I always felt at any point, you know, that could be taken away from me. And, and I felt my time could have been uh, put more towards, you know, just doing the things I love to do. And uh, part of that was running a business. Part of that was, you know, being with people and um, in front of people and, and going out to the stores um, and ultimately being your own business uh, partner and uh, business or boss, I guess, in the business. Um, and actually, a lot of my colleagues in the pharmaceutical industry said if they had a chance to to jump into something and run their own business, they would uh, they wouldn't uh, think twice about it. So, um, as much as the uh, the funds were the salaries were better in pharma, um, uh, I did make that decision. Uh, it wasn't an easy decision because I didn't leave something I didn't like, 
uh, but I was actually going to something I was wanting to do and love more. Uh, and and of course I had I had that opportunity. I mean, not many have an opportunity where a business has been established, and you're able to come in um, and not only maintain that that business. I think that's part of the second generation is. Uh, the, the, I guess the, the weight that we have on our shoulders is actually then to grow that business. Um, and, and so uh, that was a challenge that I was looking looking at and, and I saw an opportunity that I could help grow the business further and, and kind of, uh, you know, continue that, uh, that business that my parents have started and feel that's something that I could uh, get into and uh, possibly support my family and, and, and the next generation. So that's kind of where that all uh, uh, came about, I guess. That's that's amazing, and 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 you did that, didn't you? You're now yes. the vice president of the company, and you've been with the company for many years. Can you talk a little bit about that growth? What what when you stepped in, what what did you feel like um, from a new set of eyes, a new perspective, a new generation? What did you feel like were some of the changes you felt were important to make? And can you talk a little bit about the things that you implemented? For instance, you um, implemented the plate system, which which is very unique and has has done amazing things for, um, you know, customer assurance and satisfaction, and just help helps in, in in business transactions in general. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the plate system came a couple of years later, but I mean, um, again, kind of my training and and what I learned in marketing and pharmaceuticals. I thought I could take a lot of what I learned there that I could apply, uh, you know, into this industry and into our business that, again, I think in my parents' position, you know, growing a business from zero and, and up, you, you're, you're, you're working very hard in your business all the time. And you don't always get a chance to step back and, uh, you know, work on your business. Um, and so that, I think, allowed uh, myself and my father to, to kind of strategize that we could have a bit more time to work on the business from what he had established to help with and grow it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I saw opportunities in you know the technology aspect, uh, inventory software management, which I think from within a year, I, I took about a year to, to research it and I'm still with the same company today and, and that's gotten us through many years and, and you know even up till COVID and, and going through all of that. Um, that decision 15 years ago was was a great decision to to, to work on. Also, just you know, accounting aspects. Um, also, something you know, we we treat our you know we work as hard with our customers, but we work just as hard with our suppliers and, and building those relationships. So, uh, you know, buying is 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 something that you need to be on top of daily, and I think uh, again you need to have the time to do that. Um, and so I, I felt that there was uh, an opportunity to do better buying and and uh, and that aspect. So that uh, so a few of those implementations, uh, you know, uh, were were implemented in the first couple of years and that really uh, took off. Of course, then me being on the road and, and seeing what's going on in the stores, because we're not necessarily a, a traditional diamond dealer where we're in our office and our customers are visiting us. We actually um, are out uh, in the stores, seeing our customers in their environments, uh, which has been very vital because what came of that then is the uh, the authentic authentication plate system, uh, where I saw a need of combining a presentation of something that is just beautiful and expensive and has value, and then also giving a tool to the associates and the salespeople in the stores to present uh, to their customers. And then with all the certificates that were going on, so I was able to, with a good friend of mine, uh, an industrial designer, he was able to put some of my ideas and thoughts. Uh, he was really able to put that on paper and, and build this out in a, an actual uh, program. And so uh, it was also something to set us a little bit different. Um, most dealers, we, we just send parcel papers. It all looks the same. So now when you get one of ours, uh, you know it comes from us. Uh, and, and so that was uh, kind of a, a few ideas all wrapped up into one. Um, but it's kind of funny. I mean, I made up, I made that uh, kind of system up. Uh, but my father many years ago had also a brand and had a display. And actually, I was just at a store the other day and they still had it out with the, the symmetry scope. And so I guess maybe it runs in the family. We like to also, uh, you know, create and design and, and build some things that uh, are useful. So... 
Absolutely. There's always innovation and a lot of it stays stays relevant and a lot of it gets evolved further. And yeah. on that topic, where do you kind of see things moving in the future, into the future? As, as you've been innovating the past 10, 15 years, how do you see, you know, the next 10 years going? Yeah, um, I wish I had a crystal ball. It, uh, <laughs> this industry uh, seems to challenge me and everyone every year or every couple of years. And um, I mean, I think there is a lot of, obviously there's a lot of discussions more so now than ever about traceability and origin. Um, so I think we're going to see more and more of that and how that's being tracked and kind of the, the digital aspects of that and how user-friendly that will be. Um, so those are some really exciting times in that aspect. Um, some of the background uh, that's going on as well is, is you know, being able to buy a rough for specific um, requests um, and, and specific quantities and allowing a bit more of the diamond dealer, the, the, the middle tier person to be more involved in that aspect and the cutting. Um, so that's something I'm involved in and, and uh, in some auctions and, and hopefully I think that will develop over the years to come. Uh, so that will be, uh, that'll be quite interesting to see uh, those changes come about. Um, and then also what's kind of really exciting is a lot of the AI technology that's coming out in grading. Uh, so I think we're gonna see more and more of that. And I think, so all those, those tools are gonna help us kind of uh, be relevant um, while still you know selling a beautiful product uh, to our customers, to the retailers and their their uh, their customers, and and to help them celebrate those beautiful moments, and you know just have those extra uh, reassurances in the background and um, uh, things that will be nice to to have. So, absolutely. And uh, with all that success and all that growth, um, giving back has been an important part of your of your work. Can you talk a little bit about the Young Diamond Tears uh, program and the Renaissance School project and why that's important to you? Yeah, I mean, so, well, and to be honest, it, it's not something um, in our previous, uh, in the past in our, in our business that we have been necessarily giving back in that capacity. And so for the number of years now, being a member of the Young Diamond Tears and on the organizing committee, um, it's a great, wonderful group of people um, it's a very open and inviting kind of family atmosphere, um, has a much different vibe than I think our older generation and how, uh, I guess, more closed off and closed doors it was. So this seems like a very open uh, group. Um, all during COVID, you know, we were meeting once a week um, from all different walks of life and, and different parts of the industry all over the world. So it was wonderful to be a part of this group and meeting up and 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 um, and seeing each other and and so the group had gone on to a trip to South Africa. Actually, I was going to India that year, so I, I kind of missed that uh, that uh, that event. But uh, something that was very compelling was the uh, Renaissance School and seeing uh, the kids at the school in South Africa and some of the things that they didn't have that our group thought, hey, I mean, we should be able to give back to this uh, this school. We should be able to help out. And and something, it's it's kind of our environment, our ethos of our group is, is to look to give back. Um, and so uh, knowing kind of, you know, the group, me being a part of it, knowing where your funds are going and the passion that I have and the rest of the community has in this group um, is very, very encouraging and, and uh, and it's so great to see. So it's something I want to stand behind. And, and I think it's something I can honestly, because I know the background, I know the work that's being done by uh, some of our committee members, uh, that's something I can really stand behind and trust. And so I felt like if I'm going to move forward as a company um, and be able to give back to the industry, give back to a community, uh, this was a great opportunity to do this. So I have actually been quietly over the last six months raising funds because I actually didn't want to ask my customers to, uh, you know, buy from me and then me be able to use those funds that, you know, I wanted to do this purely as a company, uh, regardless of, you know, uh, my customers. But it's because of my customers supporting me that I'm able to now give back to this wonderful charity. And so that's what I hope to celebrate in June 
uh, with kind of the official 50th anniversary of, of the company is, is a certain amount of dollars that I've planned to raise that uh, I believe in the next 30 days I will meet that target and and be able to uh, make that note and, and be able to hand that check over to uh, the young Diamanteres and, and for the specific charity that uh, I'm very uh, excited about and, and passionate about. That sounds wonderful and amazing. And it's amazing that that's, your, that's part of the work that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. It's a good feeling. So we would like to wish you a very happy anniversary from the Canadian Jeweler family. Um, keep up the amazing work that you're doing um, in your leadership and in the company and in the growth. We wish you all the success in the world. And we hope that we have a chance to chat with you again and catch up on new and exciting things that you're doing. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time and uh, allowing me to uh, uh, talk. Absolutely. Absolutely.